We're joined today by actor Ken Sagos. You might remember him as Kincaid from A Nightmare on Elm Street Part 3 and Part 4. He's coming to Minnesota to Crypticon this weekend, September 13th through the 15th at the Crown Plaza Hotel in Plymouth. Ken, how you doing, man? I'm doing all right. How are you? I'm doing well. It's great speaking with you. Thank you so much for joining me. Oh, thank you for inviting me. <laughs> well, Ken, you're coming to Minnesota here for Crypticon, September 13th through the 15th. I know you've been to Crypticon before, so I'm sure you're glad to be making your return here. Yes, it's been a while. I'm glad that I'm able to come back. You know, I look forward to it, and, you know, we're going to make it work. We're going to have a great time while I'm there meeting the fans, which is what I like to do. I really do like it. Well, can you talk a bit about your experience going to these kind of conventions? I know you've done a lot of things in your career, but the Nightmare on Elm Street fans, are they got to be the most passionate, and, you know, the character of Kincaid, uh, probably one of the favorites for sure. Well, you know, I've gone to the conventions. I get a chance to meet the people who has made me who I am. So it's never a, a dull, a boring moment because, you know, a lot of people don't realize, at least I say it, is that I'm who I am because of the fans. And so you get a chance to meet the fans that is beneath your wings and that makes you fly. So to meet with them and to talk about them, especially when they talk about Ken Cade, because Ken Cade was a hero for so many people. And, it, and I get so many stories about how Ken Cade inspired them to not to give up, inspired them to keep going, and even the newer fans up into the older fans, you know, it's, what is funny is that, you know, I've had uh, people to come to my table and talk to me from three generations, a grandmother, a mother, and their child coming up. So, um, <laughs> and I think they can relate to Kincaid because Kincaid was one of the dream warriors that had a reachable dream, you know, Kincaid sure. was strong, and he talked a lot of trash. So, <laughs> and that is something that is natural. You know, it wasn't about magic. It wasn't about the other things or anything like that. Kincaid was someone, and when you push them into the corner, which everybody can relate to at one time or another, or you know someone who has been pushed into a corner, and they didn't give up, they fought back. And I think that's why they could relate to Ken Cade so much. And I know you've done a lot of theater and television, but uh, Dream Warriors really was kind of like your first big film. How was that for you being thrust into the horror genre? Because, you know, once you're in it, you, you kind of seem like you always ha at least have to keep a toe in the water. I, you know, I, actually, you know, I'm unlike the others, I believe. I had never watched A Nightmare on the Elm Street. So when I came on to A Nightmare on Elm Street, it was truly new to me, you know. And so, um, and being on the set, it was new. And I think, well, I know about three weeks prior to filming A Nightmare on Elm Street, I had just finished a TV movie with uh, Denzel Wash. And the other thing that I had done was, you know, was drama and comedy. Most people don't know I was a stand-up comic. And um, so this was a new, a new road of life for me, horror. But I must say it was something that made you go inside and work with your talent because a lot of the special effects are not there. So you have to pretend that you're there. So it was a wonderful training ground for me. And, and I was surrounded by talented young people and then there was, you know, Helga Landing Camp, and then there was Robert England. They were like big brothers and big sisters to me. And then, you know, there was Lawrence Fishburne. So I was surrounded by some of the best that was before me. And so, I, what can I say? I had a this wonderful time. It was a learning ground. And at the same time, you know, I did not realize that I was passing, a torch had been passed on to me. Um, and so if I could go and do it all over again, I would. And I hope that one day that they do make a, another Dream Warriors, that they would make it in the, the essence and the spirit that they made this one. 
that time, Freddy Krueger and the Nightmare on Elm Street really on the cusp of becoming a huge part of popular culture. That must have been pretty exciting uh, that early into your career to kind of be thrust into all that. It was. It was. It was, uh, it was my first uh, feature film role. It was, uh, it was a movie that I ha- happened to have made history with that I became the first African-American to survive an uh, international horror film and return to a sequel. You know, because <laughs> most of us, you know, minorities get killed early on. So, you know, so it was history. And, um, and then I got a chance later on to meet the great William Walker, who played Dracula. And he talked to me about that role and told me that there was a responsibility in carrying that role. You know, and so I had never forgotten him. And so, you know, it was just, a dream, a blessing, and a gift that I respect. And I got a chance to meet the fans, and I continue to meet them on, on my journey. Well, Ken, I got to ask you um, if you ever had a chance to hang out with uh, maybe Dokken or, or the Fat Boys during those music video shoots. Was that something you, you got to see offset? I, I, I know, but I, I would love to meet Docking. I would love to meet them. You see, I, I was a, I'm, I'm not going to say I was a sheltered young man, but I was, you know, I came from a small town in my early years, and then I lived in Atlanta. But a lot of this was new to me. So I, I, that's one of my bucket lists is to meet them. Now, I didn't meet the fat boys, but yet I do remember at the time they was trying to, they was talking about putting me in their video, but that never happened. Oh. And uh, I wish that it was. I know that I didn't know at the time, but in Ken K's room in part four, there's a picture of the fat boys on his wall. <laughs> so I would have loved to have met them. And I know one of them has made his transition, now, but I would love to meet them. I did get a chance to meet Will Smith, who respected nightly on the street, but uh, that's the thing is, I did not know what had been stumbled into my life and a baton that was given me, but I know now, you know, and I think that was good because I was able to really truly hold on to it. Well, I know you've done a lot of stuff behind the scenes, and it looks like you've been kind of back in front of the camera here over the last few years. I'm getting back in front of the camera, but right now... I'm working on my own um, horror film. I set out three years ago to do three short films to prove myself as a director. So I've done the first two, and I won over 100 awards for the first two each. And so now I'm working on a new horror film a new called Socrates, where a bird is a villain, a talking bird okay. is a villain, and he has a, the essence of... Uh, Wes Craven, uh, uh, it's a dedication to Wes Craven, to Alfred Hitchcock, to Alan Edgar Poe, and to William Marshall. And I'm hoping it, well, I'm not necessarily I'm hoping, it's going to be a feature film. So I'm just proving myself that I'm the director. You know, as all the fans, I, I am getting ready to go before the camera, so I did have a GoFundMe to help me with it because I have to put some on. Um, some CGI in it, and as you know, CGI is very expensive. Sure. Well, that's great that uh, you're staying busy, and I know I wanted to talk to you about the Give Back Corporation. That's some incredible work that you're doing for the kids behind the scenes. You know, I I grew up not having, and I promised God in my struggling years that, you know, because every summer I would see children a bus driving away to take kids to summer camp and I couldn't go because my mother couldn't afford it. And then when I first went to college, I couldn't afford to buy my books and everything. So I kind of promised God that if I ever got to a level that I was going to pay for some child's book and I was going to send some kids to camp every summer. So 90% of all of my proceeds that I get from the convention goes to a nonprofit 
organization that I founded in 1997. And this year, I sent 12 kids to college. And I sent about 14 to summer camp. And that's my passion. And and as of this year, I've helped over 1,000 kids through college. And I've sent about four or five hundred to summer camp. And I and that's 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 something that makes me happy because I feel that each fan that comes to me, by me giving back to the next generation through scholarships and through books, it's an essence of them that's going on with it. It's called giving back, you know. I'm where I am because people gave to me and that's why I named it the Giving Back Corporation. And um but right now, I want to give back to me, and that's why I'm trying to raise funds for this short film. Well, that's uh, amazing work you're doing. And uh, is there a place where the listeners can go to maybe help Give Back Corporation or maybe to help you uh, back your, your film that you were discussing? Yes. Uh, there's a GoFundMe, a Ken Sagos GoFundMe, and... It's Socrates, S-O-C-R-A-T-E-S, Socrates, Ken Sago Socrates on the GoFundMe. And if you just simply reach out to me on Facebook, and I will give you the link. And, you know, I hope to have, um, and this film, short film, is based off a comic book that I wrote. And I will have some of those comic books at the convention this weekend. So come by and see me. I'll just order a comic book. You know, and like I say, 90% of everything that I have goes to the inner city youth, not just in L.A., but all over the country, the United States, basically. But I have helped youth in other countries, too. And I like that, you know. You know, and every time I'm able to help a kid, I say, fucking A. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I don't know if I just, I'm just to say that on you. But, <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> I should have asked, but I just got excited. Excellent. Ken, I've been a big fan of yours for a long time, and it's been great speaking with you, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here at Crypticon. Okay, Ken, go on and make a little contribution for him. I don't care if it's a dollar. Get me a few quotes. All right. All right, will do. Thank you again, Ken. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. And again, that was Ken Sagos. He'll be coming to Crypticon September 13th through the 15th at the Crown Plaza Hotel in Plymouth, Go to CrypticonMinneapolis.com for more info.